What have I done with my stimulus check that I haven't gotten yet and probably never will? Spent it all on plugins and gear. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been using, what I've been up to, uh, making a lot of music that I've been releasing at a breakneck pace these last few weeks slash months. And it all starts with this. What is this? What is this sleek, sexy, nondescript piece of technology? This is the Morph by Sensil MIDI controller, whatever. It's a device limited only by your imagination. You can use this to draw stuff. I suck at drawing, as a lot of you may already know, so that's not really my main thing. But you can put these overlays on it, like this one right here, and instantly turn it into a MIDI keyboard. There's gonna be some other stuff that we can do with this that I'm gonna showcase later on in the video, but we're starting with this, okay? So the very first thing we need, we need some kind of cool plugin to demo. My absolute favorite plugin that I've been using is called Posthuman by some dudes that are the coolest dudes in the world because they're my homies for life. Finishing Move Inc., they make a bunch of video game soundtracks. If you've ever played uh, Borderlands 3, they got a new soundtrack out they just did with that. Uh, a lot of the Halo stuff cracked down, etc., etc. They have this plugin that is the greatest thing because anything you do to it, it just sounds amazing. You can hold one single note and it'll go on and on forever. So basically, I'm going to use the Morph to show you how I've been working on some of the new Emerald Rider stuff. Before the lockdown happened, I was able to get Pasha in here and we were able to crank out some rough ideas that I was able to put together uh, by myself, even though he'd already gone. All right. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to add kind of like an ambient type pad right here. So I'm just going to have like a chord. And then I'm just going to have this kind of playing in the background. And then to follow the shell of the chords. The reason I really like this patch in particular is because there are strings in the background in there that are always kind of like mutating and morphing around. And I think it really complements what Pasha brings to the table, which is just mad violin skill. So for instance, uh, let me kind of bring up part of the track here. solo just the plug-in and then bring it back it's time to ride in your rider stuff, which is fantastic. So stoked. If you don't know what the Emerald Riders are, it's my Celtic band, which you should know because I've been kind of promoting it generally. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, any of the pad stuff, I always like using this MIDI controller just because it sounds great. Now, you may have heard some of the percussion there. Guess what? Same device, but you can get a drum kit overlay. All you do is just swap them out, put it on there. And then you can actually play drums. Let me actually load up the patch that I was using. Right, so this is kind of like a, uh, I don't know, Celtic. So it's great. If you're good at finger drums and have no actual drum skill, you can just do this, right? Also too, it's very pressure sensitive, so you can actually use sticks. even do rolls on it because it's a rubber pad really kind of fantastic uh, just for the finger percussion alone it is kind of worth the price instead of having to 
run over to the drum kit and mic stuff up. So a lot of the, I don't know, I guess the more interesting percussion I can really just do on the, on the stencil pad right now. This right here is actually a contact instrument. Uh, it's just one of the factory library things. So that's another thing I've been using the stencil for, uh, is just kind of hand percussion when I'm too lazy to try to track real percussion. Another quick word about uh, the stencil, there's a lot of different overlays you can get. Uh, they have like a, a beat making producer one. They actually even have like a Final Cut Pro or a Adobe Premiere editing one, which uh, I'm gonna kind of try to work into the workflow too because it's all about the shortcuts. So, stencil morph, I'm gonna link you the description there, really cool. Another thing that I just released uh, recently is a lo-fi dream pop version of an Elliott Smith cover that I think turned out really well. One of the new plugins that I got, which actually is another fantastic one, is the Arturia stuff. If you don't know Arturia, they make uh, the main MIDI controller I've been using and another drum machine that I've been using. Also works really well with this too. One of my absolute favorite ones is the DX7 thing. So if you've never seen uh, a DX7, I'll show you a picture of it right here. And it's just, it's, it's just like the coolest thing in the world, right? So let me bring up uh, a patch right now. Again, I'm just making a software instrument, DX7. All right, so here it is. Now, let me find a cool... All right, so again, we're finding another pad here. It's so easy to use. They have like, a, again, my favorite feature on pretty much any synth is like an arpeggiator, All right? So you can turn an arpeggiator on. And then it just goes to work. The great thing is it has a hold thing, so you can very easily just kind of make something and have it go. The cutoff is the best. It's just like a simple up and down cutoff like filter thing. You just raise it. You can mess with the envelope if you hear this right here. Like it could not be simpler and it, it's kind of amazing the ease of use as far as like just bringing up a patch, hitting something, having it go, holding it and then working it into the workflow. And uh, again, for for lead stuff, like uh, for instance, if you if you heard the song, I'll link you to the song too, but uh, I like using the Arturia stuff mainly for the DX7, the Mellotron, which is so good. All right, here's the main. Now for that, I actually used uh, the Arturia keyboard because when it comes to lead stuff, I like the, I don't know, I guess like the actual playing of the individual keys is just something I'm way more used to than having a flat pad. But for the actual synth pad stuff, for instance, like uh, the CS31, which is here, or the arpeggiator, It's all about the uh, MIDI controller because it's just right here, it's right next to me and it sounds really cool, right? So again, those are just a couple different things I've been using. Uh, the next thing that I've been using all the time, uh, I bought this RC20 Retro plugin that is so good for kind of like adding like lo-fi sound. It has like really cool different like uh, vinyl filters on it. Like if you just listen to just this, you can hear it pretty well. And you can actually see the type of vinyl that it's using. You can change it. I really like the vinyl 2 setting on here. Again, a lot of this stuff is on sale too, by the way. I'll try to link as much as I can, but uh, you know, this is the great plug-in sale of all time with everybody kind of stuck at home. So the RZ20 Retro Color is something I've been using a lot in conjunction with pretty much all of the lower five mix stuff. Also too, this is the same plug-in I used uh, on that release to the Wild song where I kind of add a lot of distortion and stuff to my vocals. I'm a guest inside this puzzle And it's a pity that I can't stay long When I asked the host a question The answer that he gave was wrong Never been one to worry 
of pomp and circumstance. So I keep the beast in shackles and I make the body dance. So I would, I really highly recommend the RC20 as far as like any kind of lo-fi producer or whatever needs it in the toolbox because it's just that good. And this is another instance of where I started off with uh, an electric kit. Almost as like a metronome. I put the lo-fi filter on there and then I just use the Logic EQ to take up pretty much all the lows and all the highs. So I just have this sample going on. And then I ended up tracking the drum kit. And then putting a reverb on it and then just putting that RC20 filter on it. So really just kind of like adding a couple plugins really makes a huge difference as far as like a regular just kind of hi-fi well recorded drum kit to make it sound pretty cool and have it sit in an interesting spot in an entire mix. Another plugin I'm super stoked about is uh, the Arturia Reverb Intensity plugin. Uh, this is something that is more than just kind of like your regular reverb. It's something that is really great for adding a lot of effects. I'm working on another synth track with uh, Andrea. We actually released one last week that a lot of you guys had questions on how I did the vocals. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to add this new thing in here where they have this really cool preset called Expression, which does like just some crazy stuff to like vocals, right? So it's just wild. That sounds really bad, but what's really cool about it is, you know, you can kind of adjust how much you put in there. So what I've been doing is, instead of automating a lot of this stuff in, what I'll do is I'll have the vocal that I wanna affect, right? And then I will send that to an auxiliary channel, and then I'm gonna record the output of whatever the vocal it is. So I've been putting this weird reverb on it, and then in real time, just kind of tracking how I'm affecting it, right? Now you can do the same thing with automation, but I just feel like it's easier for me to do with audio that doesn't have automation in case I want to do something else with it. And uh, what I've been able to do is kind of blend in how much of the effect is on there. And when you do it tastefully, it sounds kind of cool. Like, downtown kitchen pie, and much more light. We locked in tight, there's nowhere else to go. So you'll notice when I'm kind of like taking it at the end of the phrase and then putting the weird stuff on it, it just kind of has this cool thing where it just grabs the tail end of these vocals and it just makes it makes it a pretty cool effect that you're playing in real time. And again, people will probably flame me because I'm not just automating it to kind of control it more, but I think it's, I don't know, I kind of like playing plugins almost more as instruments. And I think routing it to an auxiliary channel and then just recording the input of that from the performance as it were, is just kind of like a better way to make it feel a little more interesting to me personally. So uh, yeah, it's basically, oh, one, one more. So uh, I've also been messing around with the Fab Filter Pro Limiter. It's not super sexy. It's the FabFilter Pro L2. But basically what it is, it just kind of like is a way to, you know, a lot of us are doing self-mastering nowadays, which is essentially just taking your whole mix and then just trying to like make it sound ready for streaming and stuff. Uh, I really like everything I've seen on the FabFilter, even though there is a little bit of a learning curve to it, where you can really just kind of like nail exactly what you're going for and, uh, you know, how much is going into it. That's basically everything that I've been spending money on. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll link everything in the description. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.